Hello and welcome to Alphonse Zeilais. My name is Johanna Nagelsbach. I am the grandniece of the painter Alphonse Zeilais. What to do after graduating from high school? Study or not? And if yes, what? This question is not only asked today, but was also asked by Alphonse Zeilais in the year 1904. How he approached this subject and how he decided, you will learn in this video. For Alphonse Zeilais, it was already clear at an early age that he wanted to become an artist. It is not unlikely that he was taught the same things at that time as many young people would be taught today if they wanted to pursue a career in the arts. Pointless art. Do something real. Alphonse Zeilais wanted to paint. His works have been handed down since 1902. What were the possibilities back then? In the last video on the last video on the World Expo, we already learned that from the middle of the 19th century, considerable attention was paid to design and the emergence of industrial design. Academies trained academic painters while craft and design schools or schools of arts and crafts trained designers who worked less artistically and more commercially. The early works of Alphonse Zeilais, even before he began his studies, certainly point in the formal direction, in that he practiced geometric forms and exact reproduction. The paper he used for the drawings is also exciting. It is from Karl Schleicher & Schull, a company from Düren in Germany, which produced special papers that were used, among other things, for printing banknotes and as drawing paper. The company's embossing can be found at the bottom of Alphonse Zeilais' drawing paper. At that time, a large supply of ready-made paints of all kinds, watercolors, oil paints, tempera, had developed since the middle of the 19th century. Whereas painters used to mix their own paints with pigments, oil, binders and possibly other ingredients, artists or designers could now simply buy paints. In the case of oil paints, this had the advantage that these paints often dried much faster, thus eliminating the waiting time between the application of different colors. This made plein air painting, painting in the open air, outside, by the Impressionists or Alphonse Zeilais, possible. Drawing paper and canvases could also be purchased in the shop. Consequently, this advertisement from Munich offers not only paints and brushes, but also accessories for painting outside. In the United States, there were similar offers in the newspapers at that time. The manufacturers of the paints offer them free of charge to famous artists, such as Max Slevogt, in order to advertise the paint to the judgment of these artists. It is known that Max Lefogt, for example, gladly made use of this offer. The easy accessibility of materials also facilitated the development of commercial and academic training courses. There were many famous painters who could serve as role models for Alphonse Zeilais, both academic and non-academic. Adolf von Menzel, who became famous mainly for his realistic paintings of the life of Frederick the Great was self-taught. Claude Monet studied in the studios of master painters and for a time attended a private painting school. Max Slevogt studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich partly with the same professors with whom Alphonse Zeilais later studied. This already describes the possible training paths. Alphonse Zeilais decided to go in the direction of teaching. This had the advantage that he could become a teacher, but did not have to, and had another possible second source of income for earning a living. The newspaper Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung published an article on 10th of September 2023 in which, based on the analysis of data from art sales, it describes that contemporary artists were able to make a good living in the second half of the 19th century. The paintings fetched prizes on the international art market that were not inferior to those of the works of the old masters. From 1900 until the 1950s, 
The prices for works by contemporary artists fell significantly, while paintings by deceased artists fetched much higher prices. Looking back, Alphonse Zeilais made the right decision and did not fall into the trap of assuming that past developments can be continued into the future at will. This applies to the art market just as much as to the stock market. In future videos, we will not only learn about external influences that have affected the art market, buyers, tastes and fashions also change. Thank you very much for accompanying Alphonse Zeilais in his decision to study. Alphonse Zeilais now knows what he wants to study, but not where. If you want to find out how Alphonse Zeilais decided to which city he wanted to go and how differently cities developed during this time, please watch the next video. I look forward to meeting you then.